Welcome to the Spy Collection Digital Edition, where we are looking at spy artifacts that only exist in digital format. This is Anastasios, and this time we'll have a look at a cyber espionage operation from early 2014. Nowadays, experts attribute this operation to China's main intelligence agency, the Ministry of State Security, or MSS, and it was targeting Japan's Monju nuclear power plant. This power plant is now closed, but you can easily find it from satellite imagery near the city of Churuga. Our main source for this video was this threat intelligence report published by the UK-based Context Information Security private company that likely provided assistance during the incident response and digital forensics phase of this case. The MSS is a very large civilian intelligence agency which is responsible for foreign intelligence counterintelligence, political and national security, as well as clandestine operations. In total, it consists of 18 bureaus dedicated on different focus areas. For this particular case, we did not know which part of the MSS conducted the operation. What we do know, however, is exactly how it happened. And it all starts with a GOM player infiltration. GOM player was a very popular Windows media player in Asia, developed in South Korea, and even its name is Korean and means bear that you can also see in its logo. Here is how they compromised it. GOM player had a bulletin board where people could communicate, but this web application had a vulnerability. Specifically, it wasn't verifying the content of the files uploaded by the users, it was only checking their file extension. So the cyber operators wrote a simple code in the PHP programming language that will grant them access to execute commands, named it as a JPEG file and uploaded it on October 7, 2011. While on the server it was executed as any other file containing code, thus giving the cyber operators access to it. Once the MSS operators had access to the server, they moved laterally inside GOM player's network and they managed to compromise another system, the app.gomlab.com, a server used to host the updates of the GOM player. In a similar manner, the same operatives also compromised the Japanese real estate website Fadusan Kaitori. In this specific case, we do not know how the initial access happened, but what we do know is that after the MSS cyber operators had access to it, they used it to host a modified GOM player update. It was the same as the original one, but it also included a software implant, a backdoor. And for all of that, there was a command and control server, or C2, that it was used by the MSS cyber operators. You can see the domain name that it was using, its IP address, as well as some metadata, like when it was first seen, last seen, where it was physically located and the owning company. Basically, it was a rented server on a hosting provider in South Korea. The location was likely chosen so that it wouldn't raise any suspicions in case communication was detected between the target systems and this server. And after all of this preparation, we're moving to the initial access. The methodology that was used was something known in the Chinese hacking community as black on white. What this means is avoiding detection by loading malicious or black code via a non-malicious or trusted white code. In the Western intelligence agencies, this methodology is referred to as the software supply chain attack. Now back to this specific case, a user inside the nuclear power plant might try to update their installed GOM player, or even the GOM player by itself might try to update itself. The first thing that it would do is to reach out to app.gomlab.com to get the latest update bundle. However, the MSS had modified the server to redirect specific users to the compromised server and download a modified update bundle. So in that specific case, the request will be redirected by the GOM server to another server, the Japanese real estate website. This was likely selected to reduce suspicions in case that traffic was detected by the network security controls of the nuclear power plant. Once the request hit that compromised server, it will respond back with a modified GOM player update. And once this is installed, it will lead the compromised system 
to establish a command and control connection giving full access to the MSS operatives. Now if we dive deeper into this update bundle, we will find each installer which according to the threat intelligence report it was named as you see here. When the compromised update bundle was executed it was doing two things at the same time. First, it was installing the legitimate GOM player update. But in parallel, it was also starting a separate process from a file called GOM player beta underscore setup underscore jp dot exe. This was the installer for the software implant. Here you can also see where that name originated from. It was found into this install.exe file that was part of the software implant installer. The installer was dropping two files that they were named dll.tmp and dll64.tmp and they were obfuscated loaders of the software implant. Eventually the install.exe was used to deobfuscate those loaders and establish the actual software implant that it was deceivingly named as instructions.pdf and instructions64.pdf although they were executable files scheduled to run any time the system was booting. The report also let us know what exact implant was used and what was used. It was the Ghost Rat. This was a publicly available Chinese software implant allowing the remote operators full access to the target system. On the top left you see the administration panel where there is a compromised system listed and by right clicking the operator can do all sorts of operations from executing commands to enabling certain features like the camera or microphone to uploading and downloading files and many other operations. And on the right side part of the settings of the implant where the operator can define how it should communicate to the command control server. This software implant was widely used by many Chinese speaking actors at this point and it continued to develop up to this date. Here you can see a newer version of it running on Windows XP. As you see the operator interface is very similar. There is a list of compromised systems and by right clicking on those the operator has full covert privileged access to the target systems. And now let's talk a little bit about why would the MSS conduct this operation? Realistically speaking the answer is simple. We don't know. However we can make some hypothesis based on the activity that we have seen. To do that we established a timeline of the most notable events of this facility. Let's have a look. The green events represent a legal decision while the yellow ones are the commissioning or decommissioning, the red ones are incidents that happen to the nuclear power plant and then we have the cyber operation with orange. As you can see it took quite a while to commission this power plant and the reason was this one, the sodium leak accident that delayed its commissioning. However, once it was commissioned, even though with some delay, we can see that there was a series of accidents happening one after the other. And the operation that we're looking at today happened right after most of those accidents although there was another one that followed in 2015 to 2016. Based purely on this timeline analysis, we can make the following hypothesis. The operation could have taken place as a staging preparation for future use. For instance, intelligence gathering or sabotage operations. However, this is unlikely since when the operation happened, it was already decided that this nuclear plant is going to close. Although this wasn't finalized yet, it was seriously considered. The second hypothesis is to collect intelligence about what really happened in those accidents and what were going to be the next steps. For instance, assess the impact that those could have to the economy, to the environment or to China since it is relatively close geographically wise. Another hypothesis is that this had nothing to do with a power plant and it was instead targeting specific individuals for recruitment Lastly, it could be something entirely irrelevant. It could be some sort of auxiliary access to enable some other clandestine or covert operation that had nothing to do with the power plant itself. 
based on the very limited publicly available information, we assess that the most likely scenario is that of collecting intelligence about what really happened in the accidents that kept on happening the months prior to this cyber espionage operation. The reasoning behind this is that after the successful infiltration, there was only one accident way lower impact than all of the previous ones and the operation took place at the peak of those accidents. And this was the 2014 Monju nuclear power plant cyber espionage operation that it has been attributed to the Chinese intelligence services. If you know more details about this operation, please let us know in the comments below. Now, on the methodology that was used, even before the era of cyber espionage, we have seen it with traditional companies that were trusted by a party being used by another intelligence agency to gain access into them. It is a very effective and very hard to detect method. Another reason why nothing is as it seems.